Hi, this is Jeff Hoffman. Let's review the nutrition section of biochemistry. Vitamins are needed for certain enzymes to work, and for the step one you should know what enzymes require which vitamins, the main source of each vitamin, and what clinical symptoms are caused by excess or deficiency of each vitamin. You don't need to know their molecular structures. We'll break the vitamins down into two categories, fat-soluble and water-soluble, because each class is absorbed and stored in a different way. The fat-soluble vitamins are A, D, E, and K, and they're absorbed in the ileum of the small intestine, since that's where fat's absorbed, and they have to be absorbed with fat. Since fat requires pancreatic enzymes to be absorbed, patients who have a pancreatic enzyme deficiency can't absorb fat-soluble vitamins, and they can become deficient. If fat isn't absorbed, it'll be passed out with a stool, which is called steatorrhea, and the vitamins go out with it. Cystic fibrosis can also prevent fat and fat-soluble vitamin absorption. Do you remember why? That's because cystic fibrosis causes pancreatic insufficiency due to buildup of mucus. In healthy patients, fat-soluble vitamins enter the lymphatic system after being absorbed and eventually end up in the blood. Since they're not water-soluble, they can only travel in the blood by associating with carrier proteins, such as albumin. Ultimately, they accumulate in fat, so it takes longer for them to be cleared from the body. This is why it's much harder to become deficient in fat-soluble vitamins than water-soluble vitamins, and also it's why it's easier to accumulate toxic quantities of them. The water-soluble vitamins include all the B vitamins, vitamin C, biotin, and folate. Unlike the fat-soluble vitamins, the water-soluble ones are absorbed directly into the bloodstream from the small intestine. They're also secreted very easily in the urine, except for B12 and folate, which are stored in the liver. This is why it's relatively easy to develop deficiencies of all the water-soluble vitamins except B12 and folate. We'll go through the symptoms of deficiencies for each vitamin, but in general, most B vitamin deficiencies cause dermatitis, glossitis, and diarrhea. Glossitis means a red beefy tongue. Vitamin A, also called retinol, is a fat-soluble vitamin found in liver and leafy vegetables. After being absorbed from the intestine, it's transported to the liver within microns and to the rest of the body by attaching to pre-albumin and retinol binding protein. It functions as an antioxidant and is a key part of a molecule called retinal, which is in the retina of the eye, and is a primary molecule used to convert light into a signal. This is why vitamin A deficiency causes night blindness, also known as nyctalopia. It's also essential for the differentiation of epithelial cells into other tissue types, such as pancreatic cells, mucus secreting cells, and sebaceous glands, which is why it can be used in formulations such as Accutane and Retin-A to treat acne. This is also why its deficiency causes dry skin. It can regulate cell differentiation because it binds to and activates a protein called the retinoic acid receptor, or RAR. When bound to vitamin A, RAR can form a heterodimer with RXR, or the retinoid X receptor, and this heterodimer can then bind to DNA and regulate gene expression. You might be interested to know that the thyroid hormone receptor and the vitamin D3 receptor also both form heterodimers with RXR and use a similar mechanism to regulate gene transcription. Vitamin A can also be used to treat some diseases. Extremely large megadoses of vitamin A, about 400,000 IU per day for two days, reduces mortality in children infected with measles. It can also be used to treat acute myelocytic leukemia, type M3, since again it will bind to the retinoic acid receptor heterodimerized with RXR, and basically forced transcription of genes that cause the promyeloid cells to differentiate, thus treating the cancer. Unfortunately, you really have to watch out for vitamin A during pregnancy, since its role in expression of differentiation genes, such as the Hox genes they learn about in embryology, make it a teratogen. This is why you have to give a pregnancy test before prescribing any vitamin A-based medications, such as for acne. In addition to being teratogenic, acute toxicity with vitamin A can cause nausea, vertigo, and blurry vision, while chronic vitamin A excess can also cause arthralgias, fatigue, headaches, a sore throat, and alopecia, although in general it's pretty well tolerated. Vitamin B1, or thiamine, is a water-soluble vitamin that's found in grains, meat, and legumes. B1 functions as a cofactor for several enzymes in the form of thiamine pyrophosphate, or TPP. This is formed by ATP donating two of its phosphates to thiamine, which, by the way, you should not confuse with thymine, the nucleotide base. The enzymes that require TPP as a cofactor include pyruvate dehydrogenase, alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, transketolase, and branched-chain amino acid dehydrogenase. These are all covered in more depth later in the chapter. The most common cause of B1 deficiency in the U.S. is alcoholism, since alcohol prevents B1 uptake in the small intestine. When B1 is deficient, these enzymes can't function, which is especially problematic because glycolysis and the TCA cycle partially shut down. This reduces ATP production and causes an increase in lactic acid. While it may seem like giving these patients extra glucose would help, it actually worsens the situation because it can cause Wernicke's encephalopathy, which I'll go over in a minute. To prevent this, you should give them B1 before giving them glucose. Not being able to produce enough ATP is going to have the biggest effect on tissues that need a lot of ATP, which include the brain and the heart. This is why B1 deficiency causes Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. The Wernicke part of this is an encephalopathy, which causes ophthalmoplegia, nystagmus, chuncal ataxia, and confusion. 
If this is not treated, the Korsakoff part will come in. It includes less reversible symptoms such as impaired short-term memory, confabulation, and personality changes. These symptoms are due to the damage caused by ATP deficiency in the medial dorsal nucleus of the thalamus and the mammillary bodies. Another consequence of V1 deficiency is called dry beriberi. This is a motor and sensory neuropathy that manifests as polyneuritis and symmetric muscle wasting. A third consequence is wet beriberi, which is both a neuropathy and a high output cardiac failure, which results in dilated cardiomyopathy. Patients experience peripheral vasodilation, biventricular failure, and edema. I also want to mention that patients with HIV are deficient in B1 much more commonly than the general population, which is presumed to be the case because of the cachexia and catabolic characteristics associated with AIDS. Therefore, patients with HIV are also at risk for Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. Vitamin B2, or riboflavin, is often found in dairy products and is a cofactor in many oxidation and reduction reactions. Most importantly, it's a precursor to FAD and FMN, and in this form it can add or remove two electrons at a time from other molecules in a redox reaction. This is how it's involved in fatty acid oxidation, amino acid oxidation, and the TCA cycle. It's also a cofactor for erythrocyte glutathione reductase and for the conversion of tryptophan to niacin, which is vitamin B3. Do you remember what glutathione reductase does? It reduces glutathione disulfide, which is the oxidized form of glutathione, to the sulfhydryl form, or GSH, which is an important antioxidant. Since erythrocytes are very sensitive to oxidative damage, patients who can't reduce glutathione due to vitamin B2 deficiency can get anemia. B2 deficiency can also cause the two C's, which are chelosis, which is inflammation of the lips with scaling and fissures at the corners of the mouth, and corneal vascularization. Vitamin B3, or niacin, is found in liver, milk, and grains, and with the help of vitamin B6, it can also be synthesized from tryptophan. Similar to B2, it's involved in redox reactions, since it's a constituent of NAD and NADP. NADH provides the energy to form three ATP molecules in the electron transport chain, which you can remember because niacin is vitamin B3. Niacin deficiency can be caused by heart and up disease, in which there is decreased tryptophan absorption. Since niacin can be synthesized from tryptophan, less tryptophan means less niacin if you're not getting enough from your diet. Deficiency can also be caused by malignant carcinoid syndrome, in which tryptophan is being used up to make serotonin. Lastly, the drug isoniazid, or INH, prevents absorption of B6, and therefore prevents the synthesis of niacin from tryptophan. Moderate niacin deficiency can result in glossitis, which is a thickened, inflamed tongue. More severe deficiency can cause the three Ds of pellagra, diarrhea, dermatitis, and dementia. Extremely severe deficiency can cause the fourth D, death. How do you think you can treat pellagra? All you have to do is administer niacin and tryptophan. Excess of niacin can cause facial flushing. You'll probably never see this in someone who just ate too much liver, but it can happen in patients who are prescribed large doses of niacin. As we'll talk about in cardiology, niacin can be administered in high doses to treat hyperlipidemia, since it lowers LDL and raises HDL. While this sounds pretty useful, it's actually very rarely used, since you have to give so much niacin that you get some unpleasant side effects, which include pruritus, hives, nausea, and vomiting, in addition to the facial flushing I already mentioned. These side effects can be reduced with aspirin. Vitamin B5, or pantothenate, is used to make coenzyme A, which is a cofactor for many metabolic reactions, which we'll cover soon. At the end of glycolysis, pyruvate dehydrogenase can make acetyl coenzyme A from pyruvate and coenzyme A. As you can see, this is necessary for the TCA cycle, fatty acid synthesis, and cholesterol and ketone body synthesis. B5 deficiency is pretty rare, but it can cause dermatitis, enteritis, alopecia, and adrenal insufficiency. Vitamin B6, or pyridoxine, is found in meat, egg yolks, and wheat. Its active form is pyridoxal phosphate, which is used in transamination reactions, such as those of liver enzymes ALT and AST. ALT, or alanine transaminase, catalyzes the alanine cycle by transferring an amino group from alanine to alpha-ketoglutarate, which converts the alanine into pyruvate and alpha-ketoglutarate into glutamate. Similarly, AST, or aspartate transaminase, transfers an amino group from aspartate to alpha-ketoglutarate, creating oxaloacetate and glutamate. Levels of both ALT and AST will be elevated in serum after liver injury or due to hepatitis. B6 is also required for decarboxylation reactions, glycogen phosphorylase, cystothionine synthesis, and heme synthesis, and as I mentioned before, it's also required for the synthesis of niacin from tryptophan. B6 deficiency can cause convulsions, hyperirritability, peripheral neuropathy, and sideroblastic anemia, which is due to the inability to incorporate iron into hemoglobin, so the iron just accumulates in the cell, which you can see here. It causes peripheral neuropathy because pyridoxine is needed to make the ceramide and myelin, so without it, peripheral nerves can become demyelinated. Some drugs, such as isoniazid, cyclosporine, and penicillamine, can inhibit pyridoxine and cause some of these symptoms also.